Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have the latest from the live radar from the latest UKV have the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as we continue to see very unsettled conditions especially into the start of next week as we are looking at some significant rainfall through Monday and Tuesday. I'm surprised to be honest we've not got any warnings issued yet but I suspect those will be issued over the next few days especially for parts of southern southwestern England parts of South Wales as well where we are looking at multiple inches more of rain the longer range it continues to look very unsettled progressively as we head further into december still signs of a change perhaps longer term gm today for example showing high pressure really taking over to our north but again we're not going to talk about that too much because of how disappointing the models have been over the past sort of few weeks always promising stuff in the very longer range but never really getting into the shorter or medium time frame so still speculative but there is some hope that we could see a change around the middle to second half of the month maybe even in time for christmas so do remember, if you enjoy the videos, make sure you like and subscribe. Now, if you start on the live radar, I'll come this around 9pm on Friday evening. And you can see we've seen some significant rain this evening as well. A big weather front, the main area of rain is now clearing out into the North Sea, but it's leaving an array of heavy torrential showers behind it. Some of this even turning into snow across parts of Northern England and parts of Scotland. Again, this isn't too unusual for the time of year, um, given those areas of elevation. We did see a bit of a school feature moving through across the southeast. They gave some really hefty rain a few hours ago. Now, as I said, it is a more of a showery regime. Much of this will clear into Saturday morning. We're in for a showery weekend before big, big rain arrives um, into Monday and Tuesday. Now, to look at the temperatures, you can see it is chilly further northwards, but we're sweeping cold air away. It is a warm front there, so warm air is following behind. So it is sweeping that cold air away, and that's why we've got a bit of snow. But most are going to be milder over the coming days. Now, do look at the latest UKV. You can see all of that rain getting swept away and pushing out into the North Sea. Into Saturday, it's a very showery regime. We're not seeing massive amounts of widespread rain, but lots of showers, especially across northern England. Into Sunday, we could see a bit of persistent rain, maybe in the far south, and we are going to see some further persistent rain into the afternoon. You can see, though, it does sweep through relatively quickly, only really lingering across Scotland there into the evening. So a couple of hours of rain there, maybe heavy at times. You can see not too many brighter colours. So hopefully it shouldn't be too horrific. Still, though, could see a good 5 to 10 millimetres in quite a few spots. The big rain, though, arrives into Monday. Some heavier rain into the morning, maybe even some heavy showers, thundery showers. And then it's into the evening and overnight into Tuesday. Around midnight there, you can start to see the really significant rain arriving in the southwest. And then more widely into Tuesday. Look at that. Those brighter colours indicating some really hefty rain. And it doesn't just sweep through in three hours. It lasts all morning. And for parts of England and Wales last all day only clearing later on in the evening so we are looking at again potentially multiple inches worth of rainfall it's not only the persistent nature it's fairly persistent on sunday but it's the heavy nature as well look at those brighter colors within the areas of rain those oranges yellows and even reds appearing that is really high rainfall rates you can see that here that's 10 to 20 millimeters per hour again you see that for a few hours suddenly you are tossing up those pretty significant totals as we progress into Wednesday, it's a bit of a dry day into Wednesday, but still some showers in the north, but expect to see further precipitation later on in the week. As I said, longer range, maybe 15th of December onwards, we could see a bit of a change, but at this stage, it is not guaranteed. Most runs still showing this sort of pattern continuing. If look at the two meter temperatures, you can see it was chillier today, only kind of mid to high single digits, but that's gets, got swept away. And you see into Saturday afternoon, around 10 to 12 degrees into sunday it's not too bad no frost or anything and by the afternoon look at that 13 or 14 so much much milder monday afternoon look at that 10 to 12 degrees so it is still very mild ahead of that rain moving through and as that rain moves through it's going to have some very warm air within it maybe even mid-teens for some on tuesday but it's going to be offset by the heavy rain it's not going to feel that great at all into wednesday finally you can see again average to maybe above average temperatures around the high single digits or just about low double digits now if you look at the gfs it is grim viewing once again this evening with lots of low pressure systems coming in off the atlantic relentless atlantic lows again you can see there is bits of blocking to our north but it's never strong enough to really influence our weather too much you can see it has a go at pushing a northeasterly wind there some really cold air tries to dig in but you can see it doesn't do much because the westerly momentum is just too much if 
we did not have that Western momentum. We could be you know, heading into a really quite cold um, or a uh, cold so spell there. Maybe it wouldn't last too long, but it would definitely kind of flood in with this Greenland high. But you can see those, uh, the Atlantic momentum is just too strong and you see it powers through. And instead we just get overwhelmed with low after low and it looks horrific by the end of this run. More and more rain. Looks like the troposphere polar vortex parks itself right over the top of us and to our north. Lots of cold air to our north, mild air to our south. And we are just kind of in... Uh, the, uh, in the washing machine, really, with all these lows spiraling around, picking up moisture, lots of significant rain. You can see the accumulated precipitation. Look at that, just walls of heavy rain driving in off the Atlantic. Again, hitting those western spots closest to the Atlantic airflow. Uh, but all areas seeing many, many tens of millimetres, if not hundreds of millimetres in the coming days and coming weeks. Now, do look at the GM. There is a little bit of a change at the end of the GM. It does give some hope, but it might be crushed just because we know how much Atlantic momentum there is. You can see, again, we see the Atlantic trying to push through, but we do see a bit of high pressure trying to hold on. You can see it actually does make some progress to our north, and it does start to ridge over the top of us. Now, whether it can overwhelm this load to our west, I doubt it from the looks of this chart. And historically, when we have charts like this, normally these lows do flatten it. But you never know. There is this big cold block to our northeast that would be trying to head across northern and western Europe already, consuming Scandinavia into eastern Europe. Uh, but whether it could head towards the UK, all dependent on whether this high can get going. Given the strength of this low, though, and if we look at the westerly momentum, jet stream looks very strong. And if it dives straight back towards Greenland, then we would probably see that low breakthrough. But a little bit of hope there from the GM that we could see a change around the middle of the month, as I said. If we do finish by looking at the ECWF, again, lots of westerly momentum over the coming days. Again, lots of these deeper lows. They do come up against a bit of a block to our north, but again, it's not strong enough to really overwhelm it. And they're very similar to the, the GFS. We kind of see the tropospheric polar vortex trapped right over the top of us. It looks abysmal. And you can see it all kind of sits back over the Arctic with a mild westerly flow there around the 20th of December. So it would be setting up a mild, miserable Christmas, unfortunately, there. So there is some hope of some change. But it's really all about what happens across North America and, of course, the jet stream exiting North America. How strong will that be? How tough will those low pressure systems be? Because uh, if it does weaken ever so slightly in the coming days and weeks, then yes, high pressure could have a good go and could see a bit of a battleground scenario. Or maybe high pressure isn't able to develop to our north, but instead it, it pushes the jet stream slightly further northwards and we see a bit of higher pressure. Um, so all of those sort of scenarios are definitely within the model output. But it's at, at this stage, I would definitely go on the side of the Westley momentum and the Westley winds uh, as we've got at the moment. But it's an option. And we'll have to continue evaluating. Given, as I said, how the last couple of weeks have gone for forecasting, um, that's why I'm sort of staying on the side of the Wesley winds, because those seem to have kind of taken over all and overwhelmed all of our odds uh, throughout uh, sort of end of November, early December so far. Now, if you look at the ensembles, you see it is mixed longer term. There are some colder runs, but generally most are average to slightly above average and lots and lots of rain. So as I said, westerly momentum, lots of low pressure systems. And even uh, as we saw from the GFS and Eastern Rev, the tropospheric polar vortex parking right over the top of us. If we look at the sea level pressure, you can see it's oscillating up and down, a little bit more mixed longer term, but except that's just because the ensembles are disagreeing on time frames. But generally, lots of deviating there, indicating of a westerly flow. Two meters temperature is quite mild over the coming days, a little bit cooler longer term, but again, that's just deviating with the position of the jet stream. No real massive changes there. It's you know hovering a couple of degrees above 10 degrees, a couple of degrees below 10 degrees. Remember, this time of year, average for London is around seven or eight degrees. For a lot of the time, we are average to above average. If we look at the ECMWF to finish off, it's broadly very similar. Lots of upper air temperatures in and around average. Um, yeah, not really doing much at all, if we're being honest. Uh, most are a degree or two. You can see the Eastern Air from slightly colder there at the end as a result of uh, a little bit of a blast from the tropospheric polar vortex. Uh, again, not anything a major cold. It's just a cold polar maritime air mass, which we can see in a sort of a northwesterly wind setup. But it's not going to develop anything major there in the lead up to Christmas. So, yes, there are some hints that we could see a change. But again, clarify, they are only hints. And unless we actually see some proper verification of those uh, and some uh, sort of support, then 
yeah, cannot validate that at all, uh, as there is uh, still a lot um, to sort of play out in the coming days and weeks. It does look like, unfortunately, though, the Wesleys do have it at the moment. And yeah, we'll have to wait and see how much longer does that take over. There will be a change eventually. It's just how long does it take for us to kind of break out of this rut. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.